Great. Welcome to Torch's Coach Connect. I'm Jasmine here on the content team at Torch. Each month we are highlighting one of our beloved coaches uh, to introduce them to the community, to share their story and their wisdom for future leaders. And today we have with us Raheem Musa, one of our coaches. Raheem, welcome. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, for being here. One of the things that we appreciate about you is the way in which you embody the torch value of be present always and how engaged you are with your clients and your own learning. So I wanted to start us off with uh, the first question, which is what does be present always mean to you and how does someone build that skill? Yeah, that's a great question, Jasmine. Um, well, I'd like, I like to start with an awareness of what the word present means. And for me, it means being fully focused and involved in what one is doing or experiencing. And it also for me personally means savoring and savoring the experience to be fully present, to empathize, uh, to understand what is happening within ourselves, but also maybe with somebody else. And the easiest way that I've found to start building awareness around being present is focusing on the breath. And the simple act of say breathing, uh, which is a practice, uh, this is called mindfulness, but it actually originated from Buddhism, uh, is the easiest way to become aware. And it's not about, it's not about controlling your breath. It's more about observing the inhale and the exhale. Uh, and that's, that's one of the, the starting forms of becoming aware and, um, and not trying to control again, but, but thinking about, say, for example, uh, maybe an emotion that might surface up. Uh, to become aware of that uh, might be to also ask the question, uh, what is this? And when we, when we ask that question, when I've asked it in myself, uh, it somehow separates me from uh, what I'm feeling to then uh, being aware and being present to that emotion. So that's, that's just one example that I'd like to call out. Thank you for sharing that. I noticed as you were talking, I was like, I came back to my breath. I felt myself getting very calm. Um, I'm someone who practices mindfulness and meditation. So I think that's, that's a great, great insight to share. And also just the coming back to focus, right? And the importance of that in not only in our daily lives, but particularly in our work life. Yeah, in fact, and to add a little stat to that on focus and productivity uh, is an interesting stat is that uh, we think that when we're multitasking, that we're actually more productive, but we're doing more harm than good. It, it's shown, I think it was in the Harvard Business Review that, um, that multitasking reduces productivity by 40%. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So do you have little, you know, snippets and tips that you recommend for folks when they're trying to focus? Like I know for me, I put my phone on do not disturb, you know, I really try and limit my inputs. Are there things that you recommend for your clients to really get focused? Yeah, I think as best as possible, uh, one of the best ways uh, beyond using, you know, our phones and do not disturb and so forth is to carve out a little bit of a breathing room between calls, especially right now uh, while we're over Zoom. We need a, a minute to sort of uh, decompress and to get grounded. And the way to do it is, um, I've discovered and I've used this, it's a four, seven, eight breathing technique by Dr. Wheel. And uh, in between meetings, uh, in fact, even before this call, I did uh, the four, seven, eight breath and uh, it completely grounded me, completely. Can you share what that, what that process is? So did you say four, seven, eight? Yeah, so it's the four, seven, eight breathing technique. Uh, so. What it means is inhaling through the nose for four seconds, mm -hmm. holding the breath then for seven seconds and trying to fill up your, your tummy area. That's like filling it up like a balloon, visualizing that. And then exhaling for eight seconds through the mouth. 
And the trick here is, um, is, is holding your tongue behind your teeth, behind the, the top two teeth as you exhale and making a sound, that specific sound. Um, it's shown to relieve anxiety, uh, to reduce blood pressure, uh, more importantly, to elevate our oxygen levels. Mm -hmm. And that breathing technique, um, you only want to do it for, for three repetitions, uh, you know, once. And the benefits over time will start to, to elevate and bring you back to the present. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. I think it's really great that you were able to describe that so that folks could, could take that with them. I know that I'm going to take that with me. I'm like, yes, now is an appropriate time to practice this breathing technique. I think that's such a, a simple and yet for some reason not easy um, habit to form, right, is taking a moment in between meetings, in between tasks, to come back to ourselves, to come back to our breath. So I really appreciate that. Um, I wanna move on to our next question. And what inspired me to ask this was just thinking about different organizations and the types of resources that they provide for their employees, right? So sometimes that can look like coaches that they make available. Sometimes they can make available, you know, mental health professionals and provide therapy. And sometimes they can create mentor programs for employees. So I wanted to get your perspective on what differentiates a coach. Sure. Yeah, it's, a, it's interesting. I, I get that question a lot. And coaches have, they have experience to draw on from their personal and professional lives. But they're also trained, we're trained in the process of holding an individual accountable. Mm. And that's accountable to their potential, to make decisions for themselves, uh, to co-create the action plan moving forward. And the art of coaching is born in psychology, but its purpose is forward looking. And the way to look at coaching is uh, the goals in an action plan are the destination of the journey. And we as coaches uh, use the art of asking questions. And I'll borrow a quote from Zen uh, Buddhism, for example. Uh, there's a saying that great questioning leads to great awakening. Little questioning results in little awakening. Uh, and no questioning results in no awakening. Mm. And the difference here between coaching and, say, mentorship is mentorship is, is also drawing on personal experience, but in the form of giving advice. And in that form, it's one-on-one -on -one support uh, that anyone can give based on their experience. The difference is, as coaches, uh, we're holding the individual accountable to a forward-looking plan, uh, to unleash results, to achieve those results. Mm -hmm. uh, and then thinking about therapy or um, I think it was therapy, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, therapy is about reflecting on a situation in the past and looking introspectively and taking learning, say, from those past issues, uh, traumas, uh, maybe self-destructive habits uh, or feelings, and, and coming with uh, a plan to resolve those based on the past. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. I really, what I heard you say was that coaches are trained in the art of holding people accountable and in really being able to ask questions, right? Which is so important because it's a training in listening, right? And being able to listen to what your client is saying and to be investigative, almost like detectives, right? Of working towards these people's goals and then hearing what the barriers are and working with them to continually move forward. So I really, I really loved you sharing that. Thank you. Um, my next question is, you know, a lot of us within an organization, maybe we come in and where we start off as an individual contributor, but we want to move up, right? We want to, we want to become a leader. So how does one do that? What are some, some tips that you have for someone who enters an organization and wants to embody um and be a leader 
Yeah, I love this question, Jasmine. Uh, I can tell you from my own experience that the tips that come to mind uh, really start with, and I would suggest that if anyone wants to become a leader, that they must identify what they believe it's going to do for them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and, and understanding how it's connected to, say, their goal uh, would be the starting point. And the reason I go there as a tip is because most of the time in, and this is just drawing on my own experience, I thought leadership was uh, all fun and excitement at times, which it is. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I didn't quite understand what it meant from, in my own experience, the, uh, you know, the, the people side of the accountability and the other uh, financial sides, let's say in a corporate environment, that that came with. Um, and, and it wasn't negative. It was more of, uh, for my own learning when I got to that stage and I didn't quite have the resources and the support that I needed, uh, which meant that I was really learning from, uh, without a playbook, you know, learning, learning on the fly. Um, so the reason I suggest that is first understanding what the goal is going to achieve, but secondly, understanding, um, what leadership is and surrounding one's, oneself with, with other leaders, um, asking questions about what they do day to day, uh, you know, what the content of their role looks like, what accountabilities they have, you know, or, or even what keeps them up at night to get a realistic picture of what leadership is like. Um, and, then, and then the third is, I would say, get a sponsor. So uh, finding a sponsor in your organization or your team to achieve the goal of getting into a leadership role. And that means, um, that means voicing, first of all, that you want to, uh, to be a leader and in what function, what area, uh, but also seeking out the sponsorship so that, so that you have someone that's going to, um, that's gonna enable you to, to achieve that goal. And that's, that's really rooting for you in, in the org. Um, and, and those are probably the three tips that I would just leave at, at that at a high level. Super helpful. I love the first one, which is just, why do you want to be a leader? <laughs> you should probably be clear, right? I know that so many people, you know, want to have influence, want to have impact, but that comes with great responsibility, right? Numbers you have to hit, nights that you're going to be up, people that you are responsible for. Um, so I, I love that that's where, where you started with that. It was really, really helpful. Uh, the last question I wanted to, to leave with you is, and I know it depends on the client, right? But if we could, if you could give, you know, only two resources, whether it's a book, mm. or a podcast, or a habit to your clients right now during this time, what two things would you recommend? Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, <laughs> uh, it depends. It, it depends on where the client is at, absolutely, and what stage and what's what's surfacing for them in that moment. However, the first tip I would suggest is celebrating the win. So, what I mean by that, and, and is um, you know, we, there are a lot of meetings right now. We're virtual, and there's a lot going on in. in personal lives, you know, you have parents that are dealing with young kids at home. Uh, there's a socioeconomic challenge right now of, of, uh, of working in, in this environment. And sometimes what I see are, are leaders who go from meeting to meeting and, and are focused very hard on the results, forgetting about what the team is going through at that time. And the best way to do this, I would suggest, is celebrate a win at the beginning of a call. And a win can be something small. Like, for example, um, a personal win of mine is uh, I, made, I made a great, a great dinner yesterday. And the reason it, it's a win is because uh, the kids ate it all up and put me in a good mood, put everyone in a good mood. Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, acknowledging yeah, and acknowledging the other team member maybe for a win that they accomplished in, in the workplace about something they did well. And watch how the dynamic of that meeting goes. Mm. 
So that's, yeah, that's one tip uh, or resource I would suggest as a, like as a tool. And then the second, so I'm gonna go out on a limb here. And this is, uh, this is a little bit more personal, but there are two books that come to mind. And the first is, and I have it here at my desk, and this, this, is, this is called Life Reimagined, all right? Mm -hmm. Uh, the Science, Art, and Opportunity of Midlife. Uh, I work with a lot of uh, a lot of leaders that are that are in this sort of mid stage of their career, and are questioning sort of you know what's next. And it's not it's not a crisis. Midlife is not a crisis. It's actually an opportunity, and it's an opportunity to create, uh, to re sort of center on what's important in life and what your purpose is. And um, the reason I'd like to raise this today is I think we, we, tend to, we tend to lose sight of what's really important. You know, accomplishments are great, you know, accolades are fantastic. Uh, but one of my clients said this to me the other day, and I quote her, and she said, on my tombstone, uh, it's not gonna say that I was the best employee at organization X. And so the reason I just want to suggest this again is because there are other goals that we could be working towards and recognizing that, hey, whatever you're, whatever you're going through, just know that, um, that there, is, there is a different purpose. There's a purpose to uh, your life beyond, um, beyond the accolades. Mm -hmm. That's really powerful. I mean, I think about, you know, not only what people are striving for within an organization but one simple moment right like sharing a, a a breathing technique with a with a coworker, right like the ripples of impact and purpose that we have just by being in exchange with one another on a daily basis mm -hmm. yes yes that that that's leadership right there right. is is connecting with uh with others and so yeah, it goes beyond, it goes beyond uh, simply the results. And I'm so grateful that you asked me that question. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. It's been wonderful to meet you and to share your story and your insights. So thank you so much, Raheem. You're welcome. It's really nice to meet you, Jackie.